coronary artery disease or arteriosclerosis is becoming a very common disease nowadays thanks to the bad habits that we have adopted over the generations or over the decades. My job here is to tell you how the progression of arteriosclerosis actually happens. In this video, we will discuss step by step what are the conditions inside your body that lead arteriosclerosis or coronary artery disease or in general terms we can say the narrowing of lumen, the narrowing of vessel which can cause heart attacks. To know more, watch the video, stay tuned. everybody this is your nutritionist on the go Kavaldeep Singh Ajla from Iru Diet Nutrition and now we are going to discuss about coronary artery disease or arteriosclerosis now before starting this video let me tell you guys this is not a biology class this is not a medical lecture this is a video for layman people who want to understand the progression of chronic coronary artery disease or chronic arteriosclerosis or in layman terms the narrowing of your artery which are going to obstruct the blood flow which can cause heart disease and heart attacks okay so there will be not much scientific term and I'm not going to go into details with every cell and every enzyme that is being used okay so this is just for an overview knowledge of a common person okay so let's start the video and here I have a coronary vessel a coronary artery a artery of your heart Normally, an artery consists of three layers, but I have only made two, so don't get confused in that. We don't have to remember the names as I already told you. So it is a three-layered artery, uh, three-layered vessel, sorry, and uh, it runs in a form and a blood flow in a normal artery is a laminar flow. What the me what does the meaning of a laminar flow is? The blood flows smoothly through the vessel, touching all the inner cells and easily, not gushing away, easily moving in a stream, even though the blood is pumping, but the laminar flow of the blood is maintained under normally healthy coronary arteries. Okay, so I have explained the disease in six steps one two three four five six and we might use this space to explain a seventh step i have also written some short notes about the steps one two three four and five six seven and what is happening in these steps so let's start with step one so in step one you can see uh, in our normal blood we have uh, some calcium molecules we have a lot of stuff but I'm going to tell only the one that is going to be talked about in the future also in this video so we are going to talk about WBCs and LDL particles LDL apoprotein particles which are a transport vehicles for cholesterol okay so on, on the artery walls, we can see these cells, okay, these blue colored cells, which are called the endothelial cells or endothelium. So in stage one, in this portion over here, there is no significant damage. There is no significant chronic disease or associated cause. So the endothelium is normal, blood flow is normal, and the blood contains WBCs, LDLs, and calcium, and a lot of other stuff also. So what happens in stage two, associated causes like diabetes, okay, high blood sugars, hypertension, smoking, toxins in your blood and chemical exposure and inflammatory molecules. All these things combined start causing damage to this endothelial layer. Now endothelial layer is coated on all sides of the artery inwards okay from the inner sides it's a single layer sheet it's like a carpet a single layer cell carpet if the cell, cell layer is destroyed there is no more endothelial cells below them okay then you are going to reach directly on the vessel wall the inner layer of the artery so all these toxins actually cause endothelial cells to destroy okay many factors 
I have named a few. They destroy the endothelium. Now, when the endothelium is destroyed, LDL particles. Now, this is a bigger LDL molecule I've shown, but uh, in the representation, these black dots are the LDL particles. Okay, and these blue dots in the next stage are the WBC particles. Okay, so on the destroyed endo uh, endothelium, LDL particles come in because LDL and the carrier molecule of LDL which has cholesterol works for cellular repair. It is important for cellular repair. Again, LDL is a vehicle that transports cholesterol from the liver to the cells where it is needed. So here LDL is needed but due to the damaged endothelial and a higher concentration of LDL. Now higher concentration can also be generated by the response of the body after destroying the LDL or if you are suffering from hyperlipidemia that is higher concentration of lipids in your blood. So that is also one of the associated causes which can cause this endothelium layer to uh, damage the high amounts of lipids in your blood. Okay, so it starts aggregating to which the body reacts by calling in helping forces that is the WBCs and we shift to stage 3 over here. The LDL particles start sticking on the artery wall where the endothelium is damaged. The WBCs come in for help but they are going to help in a different way. They are going to stop LDL from doing what LDL has to do. LDL has came to help in cellular repair but the body does not recognize this as a normal repair mechanism so they call in WBCs these WBC white blood cells they uh, get converted into macrophages and they start engulfing the LDL particles they start eating up those LDL particles so what happens in stage 3 LDL deposits on damaged sites and now WBCs are coming for help First, the LDL was coming for help, but actually LDL was not helping. It actually made the matter even worse. So now the WBCs are coming in to stop these LDL particles. So in the step four over here, when one WBC start engulf engulfing LDL particles along with cholesterol, it gets higher concentration of lipids inside the WBC, inside the white blood cell. When these cells have enough of lipids inside them, they eventually die and they die on the site of damage by converting it to fluffy, fat-filled, lipid-filled foam cells. WBCs engulf LDL particles and when they die, they get converted and are called foam cells. So now there is a lot of foam cells dying and sticking on the damage site also, there is still a lot of LDL that is coming in and to stop that LDL, even more WBCs are coming in to stop those uh, LDL particles. So this is what happens in stage four. Foam cells are formed and even greater inflammatory response is being generated by the body. So you can see if you do not correct your associated causes at stage one, the inflammatory causes at stage one. Later on, when the disease starts progressing, the level of inflammation in your body is going to double and triple, keep on rising. The higher the inflammation over here in step four, the more damage to the site, more deposition of foam cells, more LDL income and more WBC income. Okay, so moving on to stage five. Now this is stage five. I have sh shown these cells, these are smooth muscle cells below uh, the arteries, okay, above and below the arteries. I have not shown them in the first four stages, but I have shown them here, okay. These cells also contribute in stopping the damage by trying to control the catastrophic events that are happening at stage four. So what these smooth cells do is, they start forming a fibrogenous cap on top of this whole cascade okay this whole fight sequence that is being going on and all the inflammation that is going on and all the foam cells and LDL cells they try to cover it to suppress it and stop it from spreading by making this fibrous cap on top of this whole cascadic catastrophic and chronic event also the 
calcium in the blood starts getting inside before the cap forms and now once a hard cap of fiber is fibrous uh, molecules is formed in the inside we still have foam cells we still have ldl and we have calcium and other particles also so this type of a fibrous cap is called a stable cap there was an inflammatory event the body tried to stop it from aggravating it formed a fibrous cap on top of it but now you can see the lumen of the vessel is decreased already okay the lumen of the vessel is already decreased coming up to number six stage six what happens is in stage six this fibrous cap hardens okay but since you are not correcting your lifestyle, you are not correcting your diet, you are still chronically inflamed, you might have associated causes like diabetes which is out of control, hypertension which is out of control and other factors, one of these events might lead to a rupture of this fibrous cap. The fibrous cap might break. Now I don't have a red marker with me so I'm showing it with the blue marker but when this ruptures a lot of platelets start aggravating to stop this damage from spreading okay now the platelets come on the damage side to stop any chance of a bleed or a rupture being spread to the rest of the body so now what we have after the fibrous cap ruptures now there is also a blood clot on the top of that arteriosclerotic plaque. So step six, the cap ruptures and the platelets come in and there is a formation of a blood clot. Now what has it done? It has even narrowed the lumen of the vessel. So with every progressive stage, the narrowing of lumen keeps on happening and the blood store sta flow, it starts getting restricted. So in the seventh stage, what is going to happen is, in the seventh stage, this fibrous cap might become more enlarged, okay, filled with all these foam cells and calcium and there also will be a blood clot now if your if your condition is not improving don't expect this to be a one and only bleed it might rupture again and it might form further clotting again i'm using the blue marker over here so there will be even higher grade of platelets aggregating to stop this bleed which has happened in the arteriosclerotic plaque and after the seventh stage the lumen is no more dilated and no blood flow can occur from this site. So what is going to happen in stage 7? In the stage 7, formation of a bigger blood clot which is going to totally constrict, totally stop the blood flow and block the whole artery, artery which will cut off the supply of this artery which is supplying fresh oxygenated blood to parts of your own heart. Remember, we are talking about coronary artery, the artery of heart. So now some part of your heart is not receiving flesh blood, which can cause a heart attack in medical terms, which is called a myocardial infarction or MI. So guys, I hope you have understood the chronic progression of arteriosclerosis. What are the key points that we have to remember in terms of nutrition perspective? We have to keep our inflammation in low. We have to keep our triglycerides and LDLs and VLDLs and cholesterol in check. We have to keep our blood sugar in check. And in the very beginning, I told you, hypertension can be the cause of the initial endothelial damage. Okay, so we have to control our hypertension with the help of diet, with the help of exercise and you can always rely for nutritional advice on your very own nutritionist on the go that is Kamal Deep Singh Ojla and Eru Diet and Nutrition. So guys, I hope you like this content. It was not a detailed biology class. It was for people, a general public to understand how the CAD disease progresses and in the next video, we are going to discuss how this atherosclerotic problem, clot or plaque can be stopped. 
the disease can be reversed up to a certain extent and what we have to do for it. So stay tuned to the channel, share the video if you liked it, subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on Facebook and Instagram. I'll see you guys next time. Until then, you guys take care.